I'm Dr. Neil Skolnick, and today we're going to talk about the American Heart Association's guidelines on elevated triglycerides. This is important because even when high HDL cholesterol is lowered with statins, elevated triglycerides impart increased risk of future atherosclerotic events, so-called residual risk. This was addressed in the 2018 American Heart Association Cholesterol Guidelines by using high triglycerides as a risk-enhancing factor that would tip you toward treatment with a statin if you were otherwise on the fence. Two trials, though, have led the American Heart Association to revise its recommendations, the JEALOUS trial and the REDUCE IT trial. Both used the medication Icosapent ethyl, which is a prescription medicine of purified EPA. Remember, fish oil, over-the-counter fish oil, is a combination of EPA and DHA, so that's different than Icosapent ethyl. The JEALOUS trial looked at over 18,000 individuals and showed that EPA reduced major coronary events by 19% compared to the control group. The REDUCE IT trial included over 8,000 people. Everyone in the trial had existing ASCVD or had diabetes with, risk in, with additional risk factors. All the participants were on statins and all of them had an LDL less than 100 milligrams per deciliter. The triglycerides were between 135 and 499 with an average triglyceride level of 216. Patients were randomized to icosapent ethyl 4 grams versus mineral oil. The composite cardiovascular endpoint was reduced by 25% over approximately 5 years, giving a number needed to treat of 21. There was an increased risk of AFib and bleeding in the treatment group. This data led the American Heart Association to revise its recommendations as follows. One. Persistent hypertriglyceridemia is defined as fasting triglycerides greater than 150 after statin use and lifestyle modification. Today, we're only going to talk about triglycerides with regard to their cardiovascular risk. Therefore, we're not going to talk about triglycerides over 500 because that's really about pancreatitis. Two. Hypertriglyceridemia is remarkably responsive to lifestyle modification, so that should always be the first approach. Optimizing diet, regular physical exercise can lead to a 20 to 50% reduction in triglyceride levels. Three, pharmacologic treatment. Now, the American Heart Association guidelines parse this out a bit. I'm gonna try and summarize this to make this usable for people with existing atherosclerotic disease or with diabetes, whether or not they have atherosclerotic disease, particularly if they're over 50 years of age, and they have persistent fasting triglycerides greater than 150 but less than 500. First, LDL-lowering therapy with a statin, additional LDL-lowering medicines as indicated, and then once maximally tolerated LDL therapy is used, or LDL is to goal. If triglycerides are still elevated, and here's the key, the guidelines say it may be reasonable to add icosapent ethyl to lifestyle modification. Second group, adults who don't have either ASCVD or diabetes. Here there's very little evidence on which to base decisions about hypertriglyceridemia. The guidelines say you share decision making. In my opinion, we should emphasize, emphasize, and then emphasize lifestyle modification because there's not good evidence that pharmacologic intervention uh, yields a benefit. But boy, oh boy, if we can uh, get people to do diet and exercise, it decreases cancer risk, it decreases cardiac risk, it elevates mood and fitness. So uh, that's the way to go. In summary, for people with established ASCVD or diabetes with persistently elevated triglycerides, it's reasonable to consider icosapent ethyl as a means of decreasing cardiovascular risk. If you'd like to comment, agree, disagree, you name it, put your comment in the box below and I'll do my best to respond. This is an important guideline about an issue that we regularly encounter. 
I'm Dr. Neil Skolnick, and this is Medscape.